1935, Congress passed the National Labor Relations Act, or Wagner Act. Its core clause guaranteed workers the right to organize and to engage in collective bargaining with their employers. Passed in the depths of the Great Depression, the Wagner Act was designed to minimize demands on the federal government and to enable workers to help themselves. At the core of the new labor relations law was a basic set of democratic principles and practices. That employees choose a union to represent themselves, that employers be required to enter into collective bargaining with that union, and that employees covered by the resulting agreement be required to join the union. In 1947, however, during a Republican backlash against the New Deal, Congress passed the Taft-Hartley Act, which undermined the rights guaranteed a decade earlier. Foremost among its provisions, Taft-Hartley allowed individual states to retreat from the basic principle of democratic representation. Under what became known as right-to-work laws, employees could no longer be required to join or pay dues to the unions which represented them. These laws spread initially where labor was weakest and where bottom-feeding states were determined to compete by lowering labor standards and labor regulations. As of early 2011, there were 22 right-to-work states. In the wake of the 2010 elections, right-to-work bills have been filed in 16 more states, shown in gray here and including Alaska and Hawaii. Six of those states, Indiana, Maine, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Wisconsin, have a Republican governor and a Republican legislature and right to work is poised to pass in this or the next legislative session.